Hey everybody, my name is Simon Drew and welcome to the Practical Stoic Bites podcast. Now I want to read you a quote from Epictetus and it goes like this. First, decide what you would be. Then do what you have to do. It's that simple. You know, this is such a powerful quote uh, if you really think about what it means. And this has actually formed the basis of one of the most effective tools that I use with my coaching clients. And that is to help people to define their own personal ideal. Because essentially what Epictetus is saying here is, listen, it's this simple. All you have to do is figure out who you should be, and then you just need to do what you have to do in order to be that person, right? And I know it sounds like it's not that simple, and honestly, it's not. Life is never that simple. But Epictetus makes a really important point. Because not a lot of people actually take that first step of deciding who they should be, how they should live their life, what principles they want to live by. And that is why I think this is such a powerful tool for helping people to really see different results in their life and to move forward with intention, which is really the goal of anyone's life. It it should be to live your life with pure intention live every day as if there's some sort of purpose to it, right? And so that's what I want to talk to you about in today's episode. And this is actually a very similar concept to the one that I taught uh, in an episode that I did on the Practical Stoic podcast a couple of years ago called Deciding Who You Will Be. And this was one of the most highly regarded episodes amongst all of my listeners uh, because I encouraged people to really define their own personal philosophy, you know, your personal guide for how you're going to live your life. And when you decide to actually do that, it's such a powerful moment because it, it can really take a lot of the guessing work that we do in life out of life and, and we have some sort of plan moving forward. But before I get into that, I want you to think about your childhood. I'm going to go all psychological on you here. Now, the way I see it is this. When you grow up, you're handed a box and that box is labeled everything that we want you to be. And so your parents from time to time will, you know, put something in that box. Your teachers will put something in that box. Uh, Your religious leaders will put some things in that box. Your friends, uh, your family, like everybody in your life puts a little something in that box called who we would like you to be. And then you go through school, maybe you go through university and right at the end of university, uh, you lock the box up put some tape over it, and that's your box. Everything that everybody wanted you to be. And most people never take the time to open that box up and think about all of the things that the people in their life actually put in that box. Most people don't take the time to question the things that they were taught, to question the values that they grew up with, or the you know societal structures that they grew up in even. Uh, Most people literally just lock that box away and they move on with their life. And the way I see it is they, they end up drifting through life. You know, no real purpose, no real aim, no real intention with the way that they're thinking, but just a steady drift all the way through. And what I encourage people to do with this exercise that Epictetus is lining out here for, you know, really deciding who you should be, is to open that box up again. Open it up and go through everything that everybody taught you and see what still works, see what you think you can probably lose and see what you would like to add to that box so that it becomes not what we want you to be, but what you want you to be. And that's the power of deciding what your personal ideal is, your personal philosophy of life. It's the power that comes when you decide to grow up and to be intentional with the way that you're living your life. And so it's so exciting when you finally do this, when you sit down and you think, what were the things that I was taught in school, by my friends, by, you know, by my teachers, by my parents, uh, my religious structures, what are all these things that I was taught and 
how could they possibly be leading me to a either a good direction in my life or to a really bad direction in my life? And then once you've questioned that, it's really important that you start to do some research and figure out how you would like to live your life. Now, if you're not quite convinced that coming up with your own personal philosophy and defining uh, your personal ideal would be helpful for you, then I want you to think about it like this. When you start a business, we know it's a fact that if you write a business plan, your chances of succeeding are actually significantly increased, upwards of 16% sometimes. Uh, we know that if you're starting a health regime, you want to get some good results in your health and fitness, uh, then we know that if you have a plan for your nutrition and a plan for your exercise, then you're going to have a significantly increased chance of succeeding at getting the goal that you want. Now, why on earth would we not do the exact same thing with our values and our beliefs, with the structures by which we view the world? Why wouldn't we have a plan for how we want to live our lives? I mean, even Seneca, he said, if you don't know which port you're sailing to, then no wind is favorable. And that's so true. That's exactly what I said at the start. It's like people are drifting through life because they don't know which port they're going to. But if you can sit down and clearly define what your personal ideal is, the very best possible version of yourself that you can conceptualize, I can guarantee you, and I promise that you will find so much clarity as you move forward through life, if you come back to that plan from time to time and read it every so often, you will have that clarity because you know, look, this is who I want to be. Not all that, not all that, not what they said, not what they said, this, this is what I say, this is what I would like to be. And so now you're probably asking, how do I do this? Well, I'll give you the template by which I give all of my clients uh, and I've told people in the past. It's pretty simple, and I want you to also know that you don't have to get this right from the start. You're not going to get it perfect. Nobody knows everything, and so there's no possible way that you could create a plan for your own personal philosophy and your ideal that is absolutely perfect. But what you can create is something that will be helpful for you, and that's what I want for you. So sit down one day, hopefully today, and spend some time writing a few notes about a few different areas of your life. So your health and fitness, your relationships, uh, your career, your finances, uh, what else, your, your community engagement, um, your active pursuit of your hobbies and, and the things that interest you. These are all great areas of life to really consider when you're writing your personal philosophy or defining your personal ideal. And in every single one of these areas, I want you to write five to 10 notes, just five to 10 dot points about how you would like to live your life in that area. And so let's say that you're thinking about your relationships. Take a moment to consider where you're at right now. You know, just take a, a bit of stock of, of, of the kind of relationships that you have and the quality of those relationships. And then if you're genuinely searching, if you're truthfully trying to find uh, where there are some areas for improvement in your life, you will find a few areas there and you'll say, I really need to fix this. And so then from there, you write down those notes. You say, well, look, with my kids, uh, for example, you know, I don't have that strong of a relationship with my kids. So ideally, you know, and this is where the creativity comes in. You, you try to imagine what would be your perfect ideal circumstance. You say, uh, I would like to be reading to my kids every single day, or I would like to be playing with them every single day, being at their sporting matches, going to their concerts, whatever it is, supporting them, right? And so that's just an example with your kids. Now, another important thing to note is if you don't know how you can get to achieving your ideal, you'll probably know that as you're writing it down. So for example, you know, if, if you're thinking about uh, your health and fitness and you know that you want to get to a certain level in your, in your weight, for example, maybe you don't actually know how to get there. So when you write that down, when you write down that goal, Make sure that you also write below it a list of places that you could go where you could find the information that could help you to get there. So let's say you wanted to get to, you know, maybe you want to drop 10 kilograms or five kilograms. You say, I don't know how to do that, but I know that my friend Sal goes to a gym, uh, you know, 
She's probably got some contacts there for personal trainers that I could talk to. That's where I need to go. So write that down so that you can at least come back to that later and have a plan for where to go to get that information. So that's how you kind of write down your personal philosophy or your personal ideal in these areas. It's basically a creative exercise in trying to think of what would make your life ideal. What would make your life exciting to live and in a life of intention. And now that you've written down all of these notes for how you would like to improve your life or, or your vision of what your ideal life would be, uh, it's important to review it. And, and you probably will come to the conclusion that this is way too much. <laughs> There's probably a lot of things that you want to fix. There's a lot of new virtues that you want to add to your life. There's a lot of areas that you want to uh, improve. And there's probably a lot of faults that you want to rid yourself of. Uh, and it can be kind of daunting. And in this moment, I want you to consider one question. Because the thing is, look, your personal ideal is just that. It's a personal ideal, right? It's not necessarily meant to be 100% achievable. But I want you to ask this question. How good could your life look if you took this personal ideal this creative vision of what your ideal life would be and acted as if it could be attainable. You know, how good would your life be if you just decided from today that instead of saying, well, that's unachievable, so I'm not going to try it. Instead, you said, maybe I can achieve this. And if I live my life as if I can achieve it, as if I can improve in all these areas and as if I can move towards my ideal vision of myself. If you live like that, that's the only way to find out if you can achieve all of those things, if you can move closer to your personal ideal. So my question to you would be, why don't you try? Why don't you then move on to the second step, which Epictetus says, which is to do what you have to do to bring yourself into closer alignment with that person who you know you could and should be. And so I hope that you really think about that because seriously, life is way too short. It's way too short to not be intentional with the way that you're living. It's way too short to not have a plan for the most important thing that you have, which is your own set of values, beliefs, and, and structures through which you view the world. It's so important, guys. And I really I want to encourage you to do this exercise. It's time to stop being weak. This is the 20s now, right? We don't need more weak people. We need strong people. And being strong means that you're intentional. It means that you have a plan for moving forward in your life with purpose, intention, and passion. And so I want you to do this exercise. And if you do it, which I hope you will, I hope that you also reach out to me. Let me know what are the one or two things that you most want to improve? What are the things that you really know that if you made improvements in them, they would drastically improve your life? You know, head to my website, simonjedrew.com forward slash contact. You can send me an email there. I would love to hear from you. And on another note, if, if you would like any help with creating your personal ideal, with really defining who it is you want to be moving forward in your life, please reach out to me. Just go to simonjedrew.com forward slash coaching, book in a free session. It's about a 20 to 25 minute session where I just get to know you and we can kind of figure out where you'd like to go with your life right now and what direction that would be best for you. you know, I'd love to help you with that. But on that note, I'll talk to you next time. But until then, I hope that this episode has helped you on your rise to the good life. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Bites podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, then please subscribe and make sure you leave a positive review. Also, I'd love to invite you to join our Facebook group. It's called the Practical Stoic Mastermind. There you can get heaps of helpful tips and you can keep up to date with everything that's happening with the show. Finally, if you'd like some help redefining or moving closer to your ideal life, then head to simonjedrew.com forward slash coaching.